Today, it's all about quick mates and traps. There's gonna be some lightning bolts coming out of nowhere really early in the game. Mostly, I wanna focus on defense. I've seen all of the traps that you're about to see here dozens of times in kids' chess. Let's make sure that we don't fall victim to them. E4, E5, Queen H5, whoa, what's going on? Mm. The queen's coming out way too early for my liking. However, if you are black here, you need to take a little bit of extra time. When that queen comes out early, it's an especially important moment for you to pause and figure out why is the most powerful piece invading my territory. That's such an important idea. Let's go ahead and put that up on the chalkboard. When the queen comes out early, take a little bit of extra time. You know what a lot of kids do here? A lot of kids get so focused on the seeming attack on f7 that they play the move g6, and actually, they force that queen to go where she wants to go anyway. Boys and girls, never attack a piece if you're helping that piece get to where she wants to go. Queen takes e5, and whoopsie daisy, our king and our rook are forked. It is a shish kebab, and our rook is going down. Let's go back. After queen h5, a better move is to defend the e5 pawn, and hey, why not develop a piece? Knight c6 looks pretty good to me. All right, let's have white play the move bishop c4, and you've seen this attack before. I'm sure you have. In fact, be honest with me, you've tried this in a game, haven't you? Yeah, you have. The four move mate, the scholar's mate. We even have extra videos on chesskid.com just dealing with this concept. There you go. You see it on the screen right now. Go watch that video when we get done. It'll teach you all about how to stop the four move checkmate. But a lot of kids, they haven't seen my videos. They play the move knight f6. They're attacking the queen, but guess what they're also doing? They're forcing her to go where she wants to go. Queen takes f7 Ow. is check and mate. There were two attackers on the weak spot. If we go back, well, you all know how to stop the checkmate here. Now g6 is a perfectly good move blocking the queen. Another excellent move is just developing your queen. Now there's two defenders on the f7 pawn, and you can politely ask the white queen to leave your territory on the next turn. On to the next quick mate or trap. This game I'm about to show you is very famous because we often say it is the shortest game ever played by two chess masters where one of them ended up becoming victorious. E5, what a crazy move. Black is giving away a free pawn. Now after knight to g4, it looks like black is about to get his pawn back, but black has got a little bit more of a trick up his sleeve. The knights wear sleeves? I don't know. Here, white made a horrible blunder. White played the move h3. Now he's probably expecting the knight to come back and take this pawn, and then white will develop. But no siree Bob, this knight had a much bigger dream in mind. Pause your videos and figure out how can that knight be a hero. If you found the move knight to e3, well, you might be too good for this level. Knight to e3, trapping the queen, and you know what you're saying, uh, uh, fun master Mike, that queen's not trapped, I'll just take it. But you know what I tricked you into doing? I tricked you into moving your F pawn. And when the F pawn moves, I have trained you to look at this diagonal and here comes the queen. This time though, it's too late to do anything about it. Once the queen enters, it's forced checkmate because all you can do is play G3 and after queen takes pawn, it is a very surprising checkmate. In fact, going back to the move knight to E3, white resigned here. White said, well, I either lose my queen or I get a checkmate. Chess masters know that's pretty much the end of the deal. On to the next one. If you are good at using your knights in those sort of smothered mates, well, you're gonna be really good at this one. Now, it looks like white hasn't done anything wrong. White has three pieces developed. They're all toward the center, but look at this knight. This knight is not on the happy square. That knight should have come to the square F3. If you're wondering why did the knight come to E2, I don't have a good answer, but there's something black is gonna to do to take advantage of it. Notice when the knight's here, the bishop is being blocked. That means the bishop can't come out and help guard any light squares. So it's not going to surprise you to know that the winning trick for black involves the light squares. This is a chess master level tactic. Pause your videos and see if you can figure it out. This time, it's three moves long. We're going to start with the move knight to b4. We have a double attack on the square c2. Now, if our knight takes that guy, not only will it be a fork of the king and the rook, but white will have to give away his queen just to survive. So, turns out, white can defend that guy by playing the move rook to c1. Now, there's two attackers and two defenders, but look at what black decides. Black wants to play knight to d3, which would be smothered mate were it not for this pawn. So, we're going to remove the guard. Bishop takes c2. 
and after rook takes c2, we're going to play the move knight to d3. We got our knight there after all, and it is a smothered mate. Now, to be honest with you, I've never actually seen this one in a game, but I did see it in a book once, and smothered mates are often how early on chess games get won or lost. Okay, by now, you're getting pretty good at those knight moves. This next one has happened many times in chess. In fact, it even happened to a friend of mine who was the chess master. Let's hope it was a blitz game, though. I'm not sure if I knew the whole story. Okay, we have a Karo Khan defense. Wow, we almost never see this on chess, kid. White simply develops. And by the way, this is a good plan. Whenever your opponent plays a strange opening, just develop your pieces normally. You're almost always going to get to a good position. Now, Black made a trade, and then he played the move knight to f6. And the most common idea here is just to move this knight away or trade the knights. But instead of doing either of those ideas, white plays the move queen to e2. Remember what I told you at the beginning of the video? When somebody brings the queen out early when you're not expecting it, that's a good time to take a little bit of extra time on your next move. Well, tons of people in chess have played the move knight to b to d7, thinking that after knight takes knight check, he can now take back with the knight and not even get double pawns. But I think you see what's happening here. The queen lined up with the black king, and that allows white to play knight to d6, yet another smothered mate. Look how cool this is. The pawn on e7 is pinned, thanks to the queen being on the e-file. Don't fall into that trap. If you don't play the Karo Khan, though, it's not likely to happen to you. Okay, moving on. We've got one last trick. In fact, this is probably the most common of all the tricks. Well, besides the four move checkmate. We've got e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6. Wow, this is called the Petrov defense. But it does kind of break the rules I give you. We don't like to answer an attack with an attack. Remember, if you answer an attack with an attack, you're always the second person to eat, and that means you get less pie. If we have an odd number of slices of pie, and we go one for one, if you eat the second slice, you're always going to end up with one fewer slices of pie. Uh, White ow. takes. And now, if Black really knows what he's doing, he can actually play the move D6 and get away with this. But we're all about the traps today. And if Black falls into the trap, it'll be knight takes. Ow. We have ourselves an open file. That's right. The E file has no pawns. Queen to E2. The queen is again developing early, only this time for Black. It's actually too late. Because, you see, if he keeps on copying, well, that'd be really silly. His queen would come here, we'd get a knight, and if he gets our knight back, well, this is easy, my dear Watson, queen takes queen. However, if we go back after queen e2, and he decides to move his knight, maybe the move knight to f6, then you can see that any knight move is going to be discovered check. Now, when you've got a situation like this, you should look at all eight knight moves. Pause your video and figure out what's the best knight move white has. Well, we should try to aim at the biggest piece possible. That's the queen. There's two ways to aim at the queen. But I don't like the move knight takes f7, even though it's discovered check. Because when you play it, the king will take back and you win nothing. In fact, you lost a knight for a pawn. But if we go back, let's go the other way. Now that move seems impossible because it's being attacked a million times. However, black can't take your knight. It is discovered check. No matter what black does, we're going to take the queen with the knight on the next turn. Even if black plays queen to e7, we still take. And we're very happy because we captured a queen on move number six. That's pretty cool. Boys and girls, everything you've seen today has happened dozens of times in the history of kids' chess. Watch my video a few times and you will not fall victim to any of these traps. In fact, you could even try them on your opponent. However, maybe they've watched the video too.